Hey guys, my name is the Russian Badger and welcome back to Harvest Day. I know my previous video was on Harvest Day, but many of you messaged me and commented in saying, I want to see another game on Harvest Day where you're using the best and most ideal weapon setup that you can think of. And in my personal opinion, that is the M16. Of course, with the 45 1911 sidearm, but primarily the M16 because there's so many long range engagements that you're going to be participating in on Harvest Day. It really is a, a must to use the M16. Although I could definitely use the XM8, or I could just be a hatchet faced catfish and just use the A94, but definitely the burst rifles excel on Harvest Day so very much, and I mean, I did quite well with it. it. It seems like, it seems a little odd because I'm trying to operate purely off of your requests. I know many of you requested the F2000 from the last video, so I'll definitely get an F2000 video for you guys, and it is absolutely deadly after the patch, if you guys haven't noticed. So I'll be definitely getting a gameplay for that. And here, I, I don't know what it was. I mean, they were just guarding this flank so, so directly, and they were stacking so many gentlemen, and you can see a lot of these, a lot of these catfish are just return, return customers, if you will. They're just coming back just to get shot in the face yet again, and I don't mind that. But it really does. It it attempts to really thwart our our movement up this right side, and that may be true. But many of them were not really approaching me in the correct manner to have some kind of chance of killing me because obviously I'm just maneuvering around this small piece of cover, and. It's so easy for me to take them down. Obviously, an SMG, SMGs, the, the the range of SMGs in this game is a little ridiculous. Although their damage drop off is fairly significant, and this guy, he he goes behind cover. So then I think, how can I get rid of the cover? Well, why don't I just whip out the 40 millimeter grenade and just pow right in the kisser? I hope you like that one. And I I don't know why so many people use the shotgun because. I always feel like my hip fire ability is proficient enough and I really don't get a whole lot of use out of the 40mm shotgun because oftentimes for me it just flat out fails. It's just an absolute failure. It's it's inconsistent and sometimes I will clearly shoot you directly in the cranium and blood will come out of your face but you don't die. That's what frustrates me about the 40mm shotgun. So I'm fairly comfortable with my hip fire and I... I really, really enjoy using the 40mm grenade because it's really great with... And I always think of it for some reason here. Okay, so this guy... I, I did the old trick where I went Wesley Snipes on one side and then I, I ran around the pistol on the other side. So he is basically... For lack of a better term, he is toast because... I mean, if you really think about that, it's, it's fairly logical. I throw a grenade on one side, I run through the house... And I don't know what this guy was doing. He, I think he was trying to get me, and then somehow he didn't notice that I just blew a hole in a wall, so I eventually get him here. But back to the whole grenade thing, it a b is a bit of a catfish move, and it's going to frustrate a lot of your opponents, but that's really my job, I think. So you throw a grenade on one side, you run around, you surround him on the other side, you just cut him off. So either he's going to get Wesley sniped in the face with a grenade, or he's going to run directly into my forty five pistol, and either way, he is not... He's not going to survive that engagement, undoubtedly. And there was an odd situation here, okay. So this guy, he thought he could get me, but then I just said, Give me your sandwich, and I shot him directly in the face. I don't know why I wanted his sandwich, but just what came to mind. And yes, I'm spamming grenades a little bit because there's a lot of traffic downstairs, and it really can't hurt. It's not like I'm using explosive weapon damage, damage or anything like that. But here it was so scary. I just went downstairs, it was like, okay, I'm very calm. It's like, okay, was ist jetzt los? Und dann plötzlich, raus, raus, schnell, schnell. It's like, I don't know what to do here. And that's what I'm thinking in my brain. I, I'm, there's so many grenades coming in there. There was a guy on my team that blew up the wall behind me with C4, and there's tanks shooting in. And in my brain, it's just this absolute conflicting, it's like this whole contradiction of actions that I could potentially perform. And... I mean, I've really been working on that lately. It's just cutting all those things out, making one decision and running away. And I really think, especially in a, in a really frightful or chaotic situation, just like I was downstairs next to that M MCOM, and I really think about it this way. Okay, number one, you're not going to dodge a Carl Gustav. You're not going to dodge any tank shells, and you're not going to dodge a 40 millimeter grenade. The really only thing that you can depend on and even have a remote chance of surviving is if they're just tossing a bunch of frags and as you can see right there look around for orange 
Oftentimes, your teammates will also spam grenades in the same room in which you are sitting next to the MCOM. So it's just a matter of deciphering which grenade is enemy and which grenade is friendly because that's that's really a tactic that usually ensues afterwards after a, a charge is set. And I don't know if you guys saw that, but Zombie Diz, he literally got in there, set the charge, and got away with a tank and so many lurkers in this building around him being building monsters and why even try it? I mean, number one, that guy's an absolute catfish because he has C4 as his clan tag. But there's just so many situations, just why even try? And, yeah, like I said, you have to commend Zombie Diz for literally setting a charge and getting out alive with a tank, literally breathing down his neck. I commend Zombie Diz for that, most definitely. But really, that's the common tactic in this specific instance. You just... I'm not trying to say you're just all a bunch of lurking catfish, but you basically are just a bunch of lurking catfish. I mean, if you really want to bring it down to brass tacks and logical facts and give me your sandwich. I love it when people actually try to sneak up on me and get revenge kills and it's not going to happen because my spotty senses tingle as soon as somebody starts getting up the stairs and I also have that great set of headphones so that really aids me. And of course, that's the common tactic. As I previously mentioned, for this specific MCOM that's in the middle of that whole square on this second to last set, everybody gets in one of those second story buildings around the MCOM, one gentleman plants it, and then we all lurk and we shoot anybody that tries to, to disarm it. And that's really fairly straightforward. I think you're just setting a charge and lurking in these surrounding buildings and waiting till it explodes. That's fairly simple, right? And then here, we had a bunch of... I'm not going to call them hill monsters because that's a little ridiculous. And then Sonic Chaos is laughing at me here because I, I've i forgotten the, the little roots that I could use to climb up the little segment of the hill that's too steep. But then again, it aided me greatly because I was forced to take the stairs and it just ended up that I flanked that guy. I mean, he shot Sonic Chaos in the face before I could actually get to him. But it definitely benefited me. So don't always try to take the, the hack route, if you want to call it that, and use the the very steep paths to get up that way. Sometimes the stairs work just fine and sometimes the stairs just provide you with a lucky flank and you get two lucky kills shooting somebody in the in the chest, I don't want to say chestal section because that's not even an official term, in the torso, in the right section of the torso because I'm on his right. Well, I don't want to say, I don't want to say something like, oh, it's on his right, your left, and then here, as soon as this gets as soon as this, this gets set, it's so easy just to lurk behind this fence. Just be a fence monster for 30 seconds. And there's also the other great benefit of this specific region right here is there's a bunch of bushes or many bushes and trees that meet the fence, so it's it's perfect cover. You're not going to get spotted if you're fairly if you're fairly static in your movements and you don't move around a whole lot. If you're fairly non-dynamic, if you want to call it that. It's very difficult to get spotted if you're inside a bush and inside of next to a fence. And as you can see, Sonic Chaos, what do you know, a triple kill with C4. So if you really want to get that objective destroyed in the easiest way possible, it's one of the easiest ways. That's, that's a fairly easy objective to get destroyed, but be a tree slash fence monster. And it's, it's really the best way. And then I know, I remember from the first one, they would all spawn back here. And it's fairly easy just to run back behind them. I get a few kills before I move in, and it's safe to say that my team had officially, for lack of a better term, absolutely destroyed this building. And I know officially destroyed, it's not like they used Destruction 2.0 to actually make it collapse, but they had infested themselves within every single orifice of this entire building, and I got a little scared there. Sometimes I accidentally shoot teammates, but good job, or good, good thing at least, I'm not playing hardcore. And basically here, there's so many there's so many teammates around the objective. If they if they even have brain stems, if they have some kind of cognitive function at all, of course they're going to be able to defend this objective. So I get that final one destroyed. Actually, I, I want to say we get that final one destroyed because it's not just me that's defending. We're all defending. And I hope you guys enjoyed this format. And what that basically means is showing the last 10, min 10 to 11 minutes of a match instead of breaking it up because it gives you a better picture of really what happened. So I want to thank you guys for watching and please inform me of what map from the new map pack you would like to see next because I really enjoy playing these new maps. It'll definitely be with the F2000, but thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald. Und tschüss, if you want to say that, but I hate saying tschüss, so okay, tschüss.